Ceski from Mediterranean University. And the title you can read. Uh, yes, okay, so this will be a really special. If it's recorded, it will be fun. Uh, Kaji catched me the other day to force me to say something, and this will be uh, difficult, but I was. I was uh, I was told to start very slowly because there will be a, a, a guest to introduce to the subject. So uh, so I will speak a little bit about uh, how much time do I have? This is the no, 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 most no. important question. Uh, no, okay. I, I worry about you, not about me. Okay. So uh, I will speak about the Hubbard model and uh, about the some of the methods which which are used when one wants to. Let's say more precisely describe the, the physics in optical lattices uh, in tight binding approximation. Okay, so standard approaches with Bose Hubbard. So just as an introduction to those people who don't know what Bose Hubbard is. Ah, so when the, the most important thing is that I did nothing. The things were done by these guys. So Mateusz Wonski is finishing a PhD. Jan Mayer is starting a PhD. And these two guys finished the PhD long time ago. Yeah. And Martin Bradley didn't finish PhD with me. But we are still collaborating. So what I would like to talk about is well, make some kind of introduction to the Bose Hubbard. Uh, to say something which we did recently about the standard Bose Hubbard, which may be a, a little bit surprising and it's simple. So just to to have something simple, and then uh, there's some motivation why to go beyond Bose Hubbard, and I would like to present uh, on glance two, two approaches which are which are possible. One is variational time dependent approach, which is not ours, and which does work, and uh, effective multi orbital approach, which we did something and which also is not working. So, then there will be some conclusions. Uh, so what is the optical lattice? I am ashamed to show this picture here, but still this is the introduction. Uh, we have the atom which interacts with light, so the dipole moment is induced in the atom. Uh, so the, the atom in fact is in the potential which is proportional to the intensity of light and inversely proportional to the detuning which is hidden in this susceptibility or whatever this parameter, polarizability. So when you, if you have this intensity of the light coming from the standing wave, then you may have such a pattern, and either at the maxima of this intensity or at the minima of this intensity, depending on the side of delta, we, we can, but always at the minima of the potential, we can somehow trap the atoms together. And of course, normally, one has the atoms also in some kind of harmonic trap, in which uh, they sit so they don't disappear or fall under the gravity force, and then on top of it you put such an optical lattice. And then, uh, if this lattice is sufficient uh, high, then the, then the idea is just to, uh, to describe it by some kind of tight binding lattice model. If I remember the order of slides, yes, so this is the, the famous bose hubbard model, incidentally discovered not by Bose nor by Hubbard, uh, but this was done by Mr. Gersh and Mr. Norman, in January issue of Physical Review. So earlier even when Hubbard created his model for Fermions. Uh, so this is one of the examples of, for famous, uh, famous uh, theorem saying that the names of models or discoveries don't go after the people who created them. This is called the Matthew. Yes, yes precisely. So this is a quite good example. This paper has been cited five times. I <laughs> hope to cite it the sixth time. Are you sure it wasn't discovered before 63? And no, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm probably... I just, I just was told about this paper, so I yeah, realized, well, yeah. because of course I didn't find, find it. I mean, I was, it was found by some German guy who, who worked heavily over reading all physical review letters. Uh, physical reviews. Okay, so the model is, uh, is simple. Uh, you have uh, something which describes the hopping between sides in the lattice, this lattice is here somehow represented uh, in Emmanuel's blog picture stolen from some of his slides or over the internet uh, as such a ca egg cartoon, okay? And then uh, we have hopping between different sides, so atoms disappear, let's say, at side i and appear at the nearby side, uh, which is i plus one written for one dimensional model, but here we have two dimensional models, so it should be some j which is uh, near to i. And then there is the reciprocal, uh, well, the, the part which I should 
Institute's uh, television contribution. And, this, and this so far is a tight binding model. This is tight binding model, precisely. Yes. For, and it, is there relevant with our eyes? Uh, I mean, whether they are bosons or mm -hmm. fermions? Uh, well, whether bosons or fermions yes. is just a commutation relation yeah. for A and A Dagger. I am sorry, I introduced the subject of Professor Trusky with this model, so we will discuss. <laughs> Yes, okay. And then there is the second term which considers the interactions of, of, uh, of uh, atoms among themselves. So, of course, they cannot interact with themselves, so they interact with each other, so they must have at least two of them. So, this is the term which comes out here, and there is a term of interaction. So, the Hamiltonian is somehow very simple. And uh, what is interesting is that it is not soluble, that's one thing. And second is that it shows the, uh, the so-called quantum phase, phase transition. So there are two ground states which, depending on the parameters, di differ in their properties significantly. So at, if there is uh, tunneling dominate, so interaction is small, this U is small, uh, so then uh, the atoms, uh, well, the, the, the kinetic energy term, which is uh, roughly the standing, uh, uh, dominates in the Hamiltonian, and this is the superfluid state, uh, where the number of particles at each side uh, may vary uh, significantly. Even in this limit, let's say, of vanishing U, this is a coherent state in, in each side. And then, when you change this ratio, uh, then at some point, uh, with strong repulsion between atoms, when this U is positive, uh, strong repulsion between these atoms, uh, forces them to oh, be as far as possible from not occupying the same side. Is, is it that not too much to call it superfluid? Because if u is equal to zero, this is just a free particle. This model. is free particle. So model. why do you call Which it? Is because it is totally coherent. The coherent length is infinite. So now, so nowadays, it's fashionable to call a free particle superfluid. Yes. Yes. To some extent. Is this obligatory in no. Krakow or it's No, it's no, it's, it's even not obligatory in Warsaw. No, no, no in Warsaw nothing in is in obligatory. Krakow. No, in Krakow it's also not obligatory. Uh, I, well, I, I, you wanted, can, no, I wanted to check next time I go to my hometown. No, no, there is no problem <laughs> if you don't call it superfluid. In fact, you can define something which is some property which is superfluid fraction. I don't want to go into these details because when it's uh, I'm getting out of the subject totally, uh, uh, which properly defines uh, the superfluid properties. And then you, you simply move this, you, change the, you make the Paris substitution, you check the superfluid fraction, and the superfluid fraction is very large. So uh, there are some measures no. which, which. The uh, reason why I ask but is. But from here, it's, it's sufficient to notice that atoms are delocalized. Yes, atoms are delocalized. Well, I think this superfluidity is not the subject of my talk, so I, yeah. this is why I want to say. No, I was just amused by the name. No, but also all atoms occupy the same uh, the same so orbital. The same orbital in the But that's, so that's not superfluid. Yes. But this is not superfluid because they can't do it. No, no. and if you put up a. <laughs> okay, so, so similarly, uh, one can. Well, okay, but there is another limit in which this ah. atom strongly repel each other. Okay, and then this is, this is the is insulating state because there is a gap, proper gap, and and uh, it's easy to see that if you have let's say mean occupation equal to one in this side just for for simplicity, and this is the case which I will be mostly considering later. So if mean occupation is equal to one, then uh, you see that this term uh, contributes zero to the energy if just one particle sits in every side. So it is somehow minimized if U is positive, why, uh, why if moving one particle from this side and placing it here adds the energy U in the limit of J, vanishing J. So this U is really the measure of the gap in, for very small J's. And this is the bose hubbard model, which, is, which, is, which was studied in several uh, thousands of papers. Uh, this transition from here to there is uh, so-called the Berezinski constant is now this type of transition with known strange properties. Uh, what we uh, wanted to look at is a, a measure which, let's say, is related somehow to the, uh, to Laflamme, who was giving lecture in the morning, because it's somehow related to, to quantum uh, computing. These people uh, introduced something which is called fidelity, uh, fortunately, I don't have to translate it into Polish because in Polish sometimes it's translated as a wierność. 
which is a funny name. And uh, then uh, what is proposed to, to, uh, to characterize with or find the position of quantum phase transition is to calculate such a fidelity, which is the overlap between the ground state and some value uh, shifted by small parameter delta to the left and to the right. And then the idea is the following, that if, the, if we are far from the phase transition, then if this delta is small, then overlap between two ground states is large, it's practically close to one. Okay? If you are at the phase transition, then the topology of the ground state changes, so you have rapid changes of the wave function, and this fidelity should go below one. So when, uh, instead of calculating some correlation functions, stuff like this, maybe it's enough to find the ground state and calculate such fidelity and localize the position of quantum phase transition. So it was proposed by these guys, let's say, around here, or maybe somebody else around here, I don't know, and tested on several models uh, on easing, there should be comma, XY, Heisenberg, Kitaev model, whatever you want, a lot of uh, models, and uh, in fact, it, it really points out to the quantum uh, phase transition, provided some finite scaling analysis is, is done. Uh, if you have a uh, nice scaling law uh, about, the, say, uh, correlation, power correlations of uh, close to the phase transition, then you can uh, get also a nice scaling law for this f. What the, is lambda? Uh, lambda is the value of parameter. Lambda is the value of the parameter. I have a Hamiltonian. And I have some, depending on some parameter. In my Bose Hubbard model, I will have Hamiltonian depending on, say, J. Or J over U, because it is the only parameter, in the, the real parameter. In, I'm sorry, very good question. The, my only parameter is J over U in, in Bose Hubbard model. And when I change J over U, find the ground states, and compare the ground states for close uh, values of this. There is another parameter in your model. Yes, sir. So the number of particles. Number of particles n. Yes, number of particles and number of sites. Number of sites is n, number of particles is n. Yeah, yeah. Or by, or by so so therefore, it's not true that there is only one parameter. In the thermodynamical limit, when n and ah, n go to n, infinity, okay. you didn't there is say just, thermodynamic I didn't say, I apologize, I didn't say to be thermodynamical. Everybody, everybody has heard that I didn't say in the... There is, this will be something, okay, I will, I will come to, uh, to uh, this, is, uh, this is, we are coming to this, okay. There is a problem for bose hubbard model because this is, not a, uh, this is not a kind of phase transition which has power law correlations. If there is a gap on one side. And since, you, since the, this word Ising model is mentioned there, then there is another parameter. Uh, which uh, uh, I'm not thinking about is, uh, 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 easing model. I think yeah, that we say easing model, not easing model. There is also US. dimensionality. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, in in, in this power, cor power correlation, there so is. So are we talking about the Hubbard model in one dimension or two we dimensions? We are talking now as the, as the Bose Hubbard model in one dimension. On the example, numerical example, which I will show, and starting from here, we are talking about Bose Hubbard in one dimension. Still, the correlations uh, are, for example, this PKT transition for Bose Hubbard is only in one dimension. This is the problem which we are uh, studying, looking at it now. Okay? So the question is since this Bose Hubbard in one dimension is difficult because this is somehow it doesn't, uh, with, with the phase transition is strange, let's say, then uh, the question is whether this fidelity will work. Okay, for the Bose Hubbard. There are some numerical, there were some numerical evidences coming from, from uh, these two papers, which uh, people has shown some uh, results for this fidelity for small, uh, small uh, systems, and then uh, claimed that if they fit something in the limit of uh, n so over n going to correctly. This, this definition is that I take a Hubbard model in one dimension, I find approximately ground state no. for, for a value of j over n equal to something, and then I take another value which is slightly different, and for some reason I, 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 I cal I'll calculate this. I calculate this overlap. The, this overlap, and that I call a fidelity. The, yes, if you agree with this definition of Mr. Zanardi, 
and uh, he's no, no, I mean, it's a definition. So yes, yes, okay. Okay. Yes, we yes, 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 but we have said it already. Minutes, we have said it already ten minutes ago. So yes, we do it. This no, I'm trying to. Okay, upper mode. So okay. this this lambda and delta together is j over n and j over n plus epsilon. Yes. J over U, over U. J over U, I'm sorry, J over U. If I may erase this, then, then what is there? Lambda is, is J over U, and delta is uh, some delta J over U, which is small, which you add here or subtract. Okay? So then, uh, then what we can do is, uh, if this delta is small, we can make, say, assuming that this is analytic, can make the expansion around uh, delta, and there will be the first term which appeared here uh, for obvious reasons will be delta squared. And then this thing, which is this guy, which is here, if this is fidelity, and this is this is and let me finish the sentence. This is a general definition. Or let me, a, let, let me finish the sentence, please. This guy, which is defined by this, uh, let's say, relation, is called fidelity susceptibility. Please. Repeat. Yeah, but I mean this this. The fact that this, this f of lambda delta is equal to this is a, is, a, is this is the definition of f for any any for any, any, any quantum any, mechanical system for any would, quantum mechanical system you don't have to have phase transition you don't have to have anything in quantum information theory they define something which is called fidelity and this is its definition yeah so this is this is the quantity which measures the linear response. To the changes of the parameters of the Hamiltonian. So we can apply the linear response uh, I mean, in, in a general system to some parameters because most of the. Yeah, so we take one parameter. Uh, but, let, let, but let's talk about the yes. Hubbard model. So we take in a Hubbard model, this says that, the, that it is, uh, there is a universal function of J of U, and if I change the J of U a little bit, then I will have this. Remote. I would not like to say that this is a universal function. I am saying that this is, I define no, such a function. No, this is a universal function. There is a certain fact. I have a, I have a Hubbard model with J over U. Yes. Which is called lambda. Yes. Okay. And then I have yes. F defined this way cannot be bigger than 1, obviously. Right? Yes. So its expansion for time in delta must start with a quadratic term. That's trivial. Yes. It's not physics. It's elementary mathematics. Yeah, but the fact that it's symmetric, it's symmetric in delta. It's also symmetric in the delta, delta, delta yeah, minus delta. Of course. So, so I, so I, I mean, I don't see the point of discussing. I mean, this is the definition yeah, of an object, which is uh, which is uh, which is. And first then, but it is zero, obviously. Yes, yes. And then you, you just expand the first term if something is. Uh, Behaves like cosine or something, but it has the, the square as a first. So this guy is called fidelity susceptibility. And uh, one thing which one can do is try to find it analytically. The problem with Pose Hubbard is that uh, almost nowhere you can find anything analytic. Uh, so, but we have Bojodansky. So, one limit is somehow trivial. Uh, for J uh, going to zero, we have so called, which uh, condensed matter people uh, say, atomic limit which means that the sides are decoupled and you can calculate everything on one side. And then one can find that this guy which is here is given analytically by such formula which n is the number of atoms and bosons, n is the number of sides. So you see that it is extensive in m. Let's say it's just, if this is 1, n over n is 1, but this is extensive with m is other. I have a question. This result is valid only in one dimension? Or in one dimension. In, in one. Everything is in one dimension. No. It is this is one, one dimension, one dimension. All this is one dimension. All this part on fidelity is on one dimension. There is other uh, non-trivial limit, which is when u over j goes to zero, uh, which is difficult to calculate. But there is Bojodansky rewrote one of the chapters of Grashtein Rizik, so now he has a table of his own sums, which he calculates at night. So one of the sums of his comes to this form, and yeah. Maybe he will find it, okay, but it's not this one. And this is, this is uh, hyper extensive, right? So this is kind of, it's proportional to m squared, so this is, or to m4, so it is, it is uh, uh, non trivial design, let's say. And then 
Then well, one can try to do some over you both to uh, standard approximation uh, of, uh, over the, uh, the mean level state, but it doesn't work well because in more phase you have a gap. Uh, you can try to... Can one understand why this is uh, this quantity has this fun effect here? Uh, why this so guy is the, such a behavior? No, but it will be more fun even later. So please let me... Uh, well, what I wanted to say is that, that uh, whatever approach you try, uh, you cannot calculate the sky reasonably. Uh, there were some guys who tried to use Luttinger liquid, sorry for this term, Luttinger liquid approach, but then uh, some people claim that in the thermodynamic limit they have some, some results. There are other published papers which show that apparently the thermodynamic limit depends on, on parameters which you how you approach this, uh, this, this limit and that uh, simply there is no, no good results and even the guy explained why this is no good results. So we just wanted to do the numerics for it. And there were some papers with the numerics but, but they were for much smaller system. So when you have some numerics which is done with, with something which for specialists is called the density matrix normalization group or, or TBD uh, with imaginary time, uh, we can do it with, in fact it was TBD, uh, with open boundary conditions, which I will call OBC, or periodic boundary conditions. So this is how this fidelity looks like as, a, as the size of the system or number of particles, because it's equivalent, uh, increases. So you see that well, the, the, the number of particles is smaller than something like this, and then this develops a shallow minimum somehow which you can trace and uh, let's say find the value of this minimum and the, and the position of this minimum and hoping to find the phase transition. So these are the open periodic boundary conditions. Uh, you also see from the numbers here that we are reaching this fidelity of the order of 0.4. So this expansion 1 minus chi uh, delta square over 2 is of course not valid in this region. But uh, we, we are looking for total fidelity so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the funny thing is, which is unexplained, and you are welcome to find the explanation, is that if you look at the value of this fidelity of the minimum, if you choose the minimum and look at this value, it is fitted with uh, very good accuracy with such a uh, nice formula. We, not, we don't know whether it is m or n here, number of particles or number of sizes. In this, we are in situation m equal to n. So we wrote here m, we could write the n. There is this delta parameter, which is, which is the, the size of our step in J, and uh, some numerical constant, which is here. The fit is magnificent. We don't know totally why it is so. This is the feature of the Stavis transition, I think. Because normally in the second order phase transition, you have the uh, exponent, uh, critical exponents and so on. And here you don't have. Yes. But I don't, I, well, this is good guess, but uh, I, this is not a proof I mean, such a statement. <laughs> I don't know if every cost Because this is the infinite order phase transition, yes? Yes, but uh, why it should uh, scale this, uh, this value of fidelity scale exponentially like this with the square of delta, I don't know. What, what is J star? Uh, J star is the position of the minimum. Where is this minimum here? This is so it's J over U. J star over U. Okay. U is uh, kept fixed, we change J, so we call it. Okay, very good. We could call it J uh, over U star. It would be more precise. Fortunately, you are not our referent. <laughs> because we will be other one more change to do. Okay. Uh, then we, for periodic boundary conditions, we cannot go uh, to such big systems, which is a technical problem, because if you uh, if you c close the, uh, the system on the torus, then uh, all these algorithms are, um, let's say, 60, 100 times slower, uh, which I'm talking about. Uh, there are papers to, uh, to several papers, 10 papers or 12 papers, how to speed up density matrix normalization group for periodic boundary conditions, all are wrong. So you can try these things and they don't work. So we could reach after, uh, well, let's say, a month of calculations for periodic boundary conditions, something like m equals 64. And you see that, this, so when we are in this high fidelity, let's say, limit in this small deviations, but you see that the minimum is much uh, sharper here, in this case, as compared to open boundary conditions. But then, well, we want to, to 
check whether you can find the, the phase transition and by going to the in, in well, the limit. But, but and then the phase transition, the critical value yeah, of it's a, it's a it's, it's a one-dimension model yes. with a short-range interaction. Yes. So how can it have, how can it, how it is possible that it has a phase transition? It has. No. It is. <laughs> no, I mean, this, this, this numerical behavior is not the proof. But it is not, uh, it is not my, uh, I am not proving that there is a phase transition, the Kosterin Stauler's phase transition for Bose Hubbard, because there are uh, 10 or 15 papers which have proven this. Uh, and uh, so I don't, uh, I, I uh, leave this aside, this discussion, whether this is phase transition or not, uh, whether this is Bose Hubbard or something else, because I cannot find the literature, I cannot show you correlation functions. Everything agrees with, with uh, the theory agrees with predictions, everything is fine. About the Bose Hubbard but, model. But, but, I uh, but, but there are simple tricks or rules to find out whether the behavior of a susceptibility is related to the to the phase transition but, or not? But so it is. It is checked that this is. Yes. Uh, for example, it, it, it is checked that this is not the Schottky anomaly or something like this. So it is shown, for example, that this one-dimensional Bose-Hubbard model on the tip of the transition um, is in the same universality as two-dimensional XY model. Yes. And therefore, this is the Kosterlitz Downs transition. Yes. So on, on, the tip, on, the, well, on the tip, which means that if you plot the, uh, well, like I have it somehow 50 slides later, but we will not reach this stage, so, uh, so there is not a problem. If you plot the, uh, this J over U, and here you have chemical potential, mm -hmm. if you would like to, to have the, uh, the plot, then the, uh, the plot looks like this, this is mod insulator, the rest is super fluid. This is mod insulator for any, uh, average n equal to 2. This is average n equal to 1. Uh, well, they, they should touch here somehow like this. Uh, this, is, uh, this is what is called superfluid by the broad community. And uh, this is the tip which is somehow around 0 0.3. And the reason I'm asking is and there is And there is a, a going along the, the Precisely along the line with this, is an, this would be another example of the fact that the quantum phase transition is d minus one dimension. Yes, uh, yes, the, yes. Yeah, and exactly. that's what I'm. That's what I'm trying this to to, to I Yeah, I mean that's what I'm trying to so understand. And to maybe this is not so obvious to the yes. rest of the audience that there is a, some kind of a rule or yeah. assumption that if. It, if I have a classical phase transition in d dimension, that there is a one dimension less quantum mechanical. Yes, precisely. So, so that, that's what I wanted. This is what I wanted to, okay. to, to pick it up. Okay. So then, then if we have this, if we have this point, which is the minimum, so we would like to make the thermodynamic limit. Okay. So go to the larger size possible. So then, these are the uh, data points for uh, well for different sizes of the system, and you can fit them uh, by the red curve, which has no logarithmic correction, and by the, uh, by the blue curve, which is slightly better, and this is kind of expression which we fit with some logarithmic correction, with errors like this, and the value of, of this uh, phase transition is 0 0.21. Uh, not the value of phase transition, the value of the uh, extrapolated to infinity uh, thermodynamic limit the position of the minimum of the day. Uh, position, uh, the phase transition position is around 0.3. This is 0 0.297 according to Dominic and me, uh, let's say five years ago, and somebody else calculated now a little bit better, and they claim it is 0 0.0.292 or something, but it's certainly far, far away from this value. That's, that's obvious. Uh, if you uh, look at uh, fidelity susceptibility uh, for small deltas and increase them and you plot this, then uh, some people observed, Regal and others, because they also observed some discrepancy, but they observed that these guys cross here somewhere at the magic point which coincides with a real, real value more or less of phase transition. 
uh, except that for us this is just the, just the total coincidence. Okay? Because there is no, no, no grounds on which one can say that this cross is, is okay, and all these results are for uh, open boundary conditions, for periodic boundary conditions, despite the fact that you are, what happened with my periodic boundary conditions? It disappeared. Yes, there was, a, there was a slide about periodic boundary conditions, so I will explain to you. I don't know what happened to this slide, maybe it disappeared in the train, which was going from Krakow to, uh, to Orso. Uh, first of all, there is no such crossing. There is no such crossing in, in periodic boundary conditions. Uh, so, uh, so there is, uh, this is just artifact for, for uh, uh, open boundary conditions. We have much smaller sizes, up to 64. So of course we cannot make the fit with this accuracy. But the obtained value, uh, you have to believe me from the, in the numerics, I have the paper somewhere, uh, to prove it after the, the talk, that the value obtained is 0 0.27 or 28 of this order. With the error bounds, it agrees with the phase transition. So it seems that there is, despite the fact that the system is large, there is huge difference between open boundary conditions and periodic boundary conditions as far as physicality is concerned. And this is kind of surprising message because normally we say that, okay, what happens at the edges of the system if you put thousands of atoms or thousands of sites? It doesn't matter. Of course the wave function goes back to zero. But it doesn't matter normally because we have everywhere density equal one. This bloody wave function See, it feels the boundary conditions, despite the fact that it is, the system is thousand size or so large, and falsifies the fidelity, just because of the boundary conditions. And the explanation somehow can be seen in this plot, which is the, let's say, not for thousand, but to 56 sites. It is the, of the density of particles on the sites for unit field. We have two, 256 particles, 256 sites. But we have open boundary conditions, so we have, of course, uh, zero here and zero, zero here. So then this density slightly changes here. And these modifications of density affect the whole wave function, propagate through this wave function, showing very, if you want, in the language of quantum computing, very distant entanglement of the system and showing that all of this system is totally entangled of a very large distance. Okay? So this is funny finding which I wanted to share with you. Tom, please. Have you tried to do it with uh, this twisted boundary conditions? Because mm -hmm. there is this paper by Astar Karcic or someone from the Barcelona who show that uh, if you make this uh, different boundary conditions with tw uh, different twisting, then you can calculate the superfluid fraction. In the no, this, this is not in the best paper of Astar Karcic, but there is a rough and Barnett paper from 2002, yes. uh, which defines the superfluid fraction yes. by twisted boundary yes. conditions. And Mr. Damsky uh, calculated it using the, the twisted boundary conditions okay. for okay. mean field model for this order in 2002 yes. in the paper, okay. which has what, 200 citations. So, uh, so we started the disorder. No, so, no, so there is no, no, no. Um, Okay, if you calculate the twisted boundary conditions, then you will get the superfluid fraction. You may probably get the position of the, with some precision, the position of the, of the phase transition point. Uh, I never attempted to do phase, uh, this, uh, to compare the accuracy which you get with the accuracy obtained from correlation functions. Because what, what we know from, from the theory, from Pasteur's tablets, and from rooted jagged liquid theory is that the, the correlation functions decay as a one quarter uh, at the phase transition. It is exact result. So when it is, for me it was easier to calculate the correlation function than to go from real to complex tunnelings with twisted boundary conditions. This is the detail. But nobody calculated probably fidelity in this way as looking at the... Yes, but then probably one can maybe look at it. Okay. So, how much time do I get? Still a lot. Still a lot, okay. So when this was one, uh, one uh, nice uh, subject coming about this model, but then I would like to, to improve this model, so I have to somehow come back to derivation of this model. 
So then what we do, we write the standard. Now there will be a bunch of formulas, I am sorry. I will skip some of them. Uh, so uh, we write the Hamiltonian in second quantization of the system. There is the lattice potential, there is some external trap, if one wants, and there is an interaction potential which uh, for uh, purists uh, could be approximated this way. Uh, but uh, very often is approximated by a contact interaction term. Uh, Kajik knows and, and plenty of other people know that this, is, this should be better as long as we make the basis which is contained of smooth functions and we don't go to very uh, uh, large and uh, kinetic energy, then these potentials are totally equivalent. But purists complain if you don't write this form and throw away your paper for correction. So then it's better. It wasn't me. I know, I know it wasn't you. It was Mr. Hitler. <laughs> because he asked us to, to, to add uh, seven papers on Mr. Buckler to the reference list. So it was obvious that was. <laughs> OK. But <laughs> this is a standard situation. Uh, we have a lattice potential. So this V here is the lattice potential, which may have different uh, amplitudes in different directions, let's say x and y. And in particular, the model which I was talking about was the situation like this, that you have, uh, in fact, uh, very strong lasers in two directions, producing such a tubes, and then a relatively small lattice around here. So when we can realize in the experiment uh, arrangements of tubes, which are not interacting among themselves, because tunneling from here to here is practically forbidden, but uh, without the lattice, they can just move along the line uh, in some shallow trap. If you put the lattice, then you have one dimensional system. You can make these three uh, lattices of the same magnitude and then you realize a uh, fancy crystal uh, originated in New York or uh, somewhere else. And the, what then, when you can do in the standard way, expand the field operator in linear functions, where the alpha index numbers the bands, uh, block bands, different block bands, and the creation operators which which were therefore uh, corresponding to side i and the uh, band, uh, block band alpha. The standard Hubbard model co consists on the, well, considers low energy states, uh, low temperature, zero temperature, so when there is the, only the lowest band. But if you make the expansion, we expand in all linear functions because we have to. Then we calculate, calculate trivial integrals and we get the Hamiltonian, which is, which is written here. Uh, which contains the tunnelings, which due to properties of the Wagner functions, the tunneling doesn't change the band. This is the, just the, uh, because the Wagner functions are constructed. You know, that's the reason why they have been invented. This, precisely, uh, precisely. It's not this way. Yes, okay. And, uh, and then there is the interaction term in full glory here with all the indices. If you want to have more indices, please add. It's no problem. And the energies at at each size. Then these integrals are given by four linear uh, functions taking at the same point because we have contact interactions, so there's also this delta which already is taken care of, and the uh, tunnelings are in this form. The problem is that this Hamiltonian is of course nice, but it is insoluble. Okay? Because we have, uh, it's so, even, uh, even Bose Hubbard is not so, well, it can be diagonalized for 10 particles and on 10 sides, and Tomek Sobinski can do it for 12 particles and 12 sides, so this is why he is so well known in this diagonalization business. But, uh, but this, this guy is even uh, untreatable for, for more than, I don't know, 5 sides and 5, 6 particles. This is difficult. Precisely because of, of these many couplings which are here, many tunnelings, or there. So then, uh, if you want somehow to include the, the interactions properly, whatever, you have to do some approximations. The most brutal approximation is in the Hubbard model, when you just, first of all, you leave just the uh, alpha equal to 1 or to 0, depending on your notation. And then uh, you include nearest neighbor tunnelings only, which is, which is OK. And you drop all the interactions except interactions on the side. And only density-density interactions, which was what, what was that. Uh, this is, the problem is that this is, this is, as I said, numerically intractable if I want to do it exactly. Uh, so uh, the other problem, which is with, with this approach, with, with Bose-Hubbard model, is the fact that the linear basis is really 
as long as it was defined, uh, non-interacting basis. So in the moment when this interact, oh sorry, somehow this, at the moment when this interaction starts to play the rule when this G is large, then uh, at this moment this basis somehow is not adapted to the problem. So one has to find the ways of including interaction in the basis to construct a better model, uh, somehow soluble. And this is the, 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 the way people do things. Uh, one of the propositions was somehow variational time, uh, time independent was a Hubbard approach, which consists in the following way, that you, uh, you construct, uh, for each side, you construct a vanier function, one vanier function, which is a combination of, of uh, several band functions with time-dependent coefficients. And now the, you construct the uh, evolution for this time-dependent uh, coefficients d, and for all the parameters of the Hamiltonian, for the, for, in fact, for the, then for these vanier functions, from variational principle. So it is kind of nice because variational principle within a given subspace is sometimes uh, somehow optimal. Normally, normally gives some optimal results. So these guys were very happy that they have a variational time dependent approach. And, and this is kind of heavy. I am hesi I'm hesitating whether I should show these formulas. So uh, maybe I'll just show that the, uh, this time dependent variational Hamiltonian which you obtain uh, is in fact the same Bose Hubbard Hamiltonian, which the L here should be substituted by M. I'm sorry. The number of sites smoothly changed from M to L. Uh, by uh, copy pasting, and uh, so then this is the same Hamiltonian, but now we have a time dependent creation creation operators and time dependent tunnelings and interactions which are defined in some strange way. You can build the other equations very complicated, but what is the real approximation which 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 is here, and I would like to show you and warn you about it. But uh, how do you get, I mean, in order to calculate the J of T, of T, right? You have to know how to W, how, you, how, how, how to evolve the W's. So, so then what, you, what you do, okay, I know that you are in now, now. What you do, you expand the wave function in terms of, uh, well, time-dependent coefficients and the vectors, and all these vectors are, let's say, in position representation. In this notation, it means that there is uh, some uh, given n particles on these sites in different okay. possible permutations of vanier functions. And then for this, this guy, you write the variational principle, so you take the Hamiltonian, okay, minus it, expand it in, in phi's, and then you take Lagrange coefficients which are, you are just keeping the norm of this time-dependent vanier functions, which are okay. And then you can get exact equations for this evolution of vanier functions, and uh, what else is a different object which appears here. But the, but the finally object of the study is the property of the ground state, yes? Uh, yes, so of course, if you start from so the ground state, yes. Yes, I will show examples on the ground state. So but what ground sort of time dependence are you talking about? Physically. Yeah. Physically, I, depending on what I, what I want to do. If I want to, uh, well, I can do it in imaginary time to get the real, uh, the real uh, ground yes. state. I can change the parameters in the system, and then my vanier functions adapt. For example, I can, I can change the height of the lattice, so can, and my vanier so functions can, can adapt. You can see how this changes I uh, can, as you change the parameters of the model. Yeah. Yes. For example, I can start from uh, the model which is from the ground state at very small interactions, where interactions yeah. don't play the rule, and then increase the uh, interactions yeah. and see what are the properties okay. of the ground state. Okay. 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 This is, this is, this is, this is an parameter. It may be thought sometimes as a as, uh, change of some parameters, not necessarily yeah. adiabatic. It's, it doesn't have to be adiabatic. Okay. Well, uh, well, come on, it's this okay, kind okay. of variation okay. principle, so what else it is? Now, uh, let me. Uh, well, the, I was suspicious about this guy at the moment when I saw it. Why? Because uh, somehow, uh, instead of. Uh, this is very rich structure here, and so, somehow you, uh, all particles at a given site are represented by the same time-dependent vanier function. Okay, 
So it is. It looks like some kind of of uh, mean field, okay? Because they are all in the same state. I don't like it because I can imagine that I have uh, five pi particles at the side, where let's say two are in the grounds in the lowest band and one is in the first excited band and so on. And uh, this changes in time. And I cannot explain it by a, by a single Vanier function because otherwise they all uh, behave the same way. Uh, so there, there are certain limitations of this approach, which I wanted to see, but nobody tested this approach because it's complicated, okay? So if you write very complicated paper and you get through them, it's, you are relatively safe. And you uh, publish it in a crazy paper. Uh, why? No, this was published in very good, relatively good journal, which is New Journal of Physics. And uh, which, well, okay, at least by, uh, by the Ministry of Higher Education in Poland, it is better than physical review except physical review C, which is nuclear physics, which is on the level of physical review letters. Uh, if you ask me why, I can tell you in private. <laughs> Probably. But you are interested, interested in, in the intelligent enough to find it by yourself why it is so. So I will not say that. And you can come back to physics. So we employ these answers, okay, for very simple system for which we can control approximation, okay? So uh, the, our system is four sides and six particles with many bands, okay? And then I find the ground state as a function of interaction strength, this G, which is for rubidium typically of the order of one, 0 0.87 or something, uh, of the order of one. But who, well, nobody, uh, uh, well, I can use flash bar resonance, I can use anything that you want, different system, I can have bigger G. And then this is, this is the, the dotted line is the ground state of the bose hubbard standard bose hubbard model, which is as, uh, the reference for us, okay? So this is the flat, because it changes rapidly with G, but I don't want to have this rapid change on the axis, so this is my reference. One band in many, body ex many band expansion, okay? Then I have this variational principle ground state, which is, which is obtained here, uh, this red uh, dashed line comes from this variational approach, which after, uh, if you take three or four or five bands here in this expansion, it doesn't matter, you get the same result. Uh, already better is uh, standard two band expansion, well, the standard multi band expansion uh, reduced to two bands. If you have first band and uh, ground state, ground band, and the first excited block band, it gives better accuracy, and of course, it starts to, give a, a, to converge to the ground state when you increase the number of bands. If you, uh, this five bands is already something like 40,000 by 40,000 matrix, so, so it is enough to, to, well, to make the patient student and patient. So, so you cannot go much harder, and there is no point. Apparently, the method is not working. Too well for large G. Uh, well, it's comparable to, to first two bands for, let's say, moderate ranges. What, what I can do is study the time dependence when this parameter T is really the time dependence. <coughs> so you prepare some state, which is not the ground state, some initial state. For example, 2, 2, 1, 1. You have four sides, two, uh, six particles, so this is quite nice state, uh, fog type, with periodic boundary conditions. And then if G is small, you evolve it uh, along the uh, black line, which is the variational uh, calculation, or along the, uh, the red line, uh, which is, the, uh, which is the, the red or green, depending on the position of these particles, uh, for uh, multiband expansion, okay? And then for small G, uh, you see no difference. The, the variational method as, and the multiband work together. For larger G, uh, well, there is practically no correlation between between the well. This is occupation of, of one side goes from one to one point five half. In a regular way, in multiband expansion, and the other side goes like this. While the, uh, the behavior is totally different with the variation answers. It doesn't catch the, uh, the physics for for this non cut. Another example is something like this when we uh, quench the uh, G from uh, small value, this G, from small value to let's say 10 for different times. Okay? 
So uh, when uh, we look at the final energy as a function of the quench time, if we quench very, very slowly, we should follow the ground state. Okay? And then if you quench very slowly with, uh, now the colors are uh, changed, uh, if we quench very slowly with multiband expansion, we land somewhere here, and variational approach gives the ground state of much higher energy. Okay, so, so this just uh, shows that the variational approach is not too good, so then one, what one can do, one can improve it. Okay, let's try to improve it. We took one vanier function per site. So the simplest way we can try to improve it is take two vanier functions per site, rewrite the variational condition for the larger Hilbert space which you take into account, and uh, maybe this will improve things because at this we will have some positive result. I am sorry to say that it improves something because this is the result for one band which we, which we, uh, this is the, this new journal of physics uh, setup band, let's say, group result. If you uh, work on this approach, you include two bands, you get somewhere here, but this is still, uh, which is far superior to this, but is inferior to three or four bands uh, uh, multiband expansion. So this variational approach is simply not working and is, in our opinion, simply not worth investing in. And uh, why? Because this really, if you have strong interactions, then the particles uh, get strongly correlated. There is some kind of multi-particle entanglement, and you need many functions, combination of many functions, to describe the state. You cannot make such some kind of an answer like this. So it is kind of depressing result. But what was the lattice depth here in the simulations in the recording? It is shallow uh, lattice or deep lattice? Uh, no, no, it is rather, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, of the order of 20, I would say. I, I have a print number. No, no, which, but it is deep lattice. It, no, it's relatively deep lattice, yes. <coughs> so, so somehow this interaction is, is uh, with higher bands, it's important. Okay, so uh, last uh, approach which I would, would like to just tell you a little bit about is other approach which many people contributed, which I listed on the, some of the papers, how to modify the vanier functions to take care of the interactions. And uh, this is against other approach of Sederbaum. Uh, this is very nice early paper of um, Philips group, experimental, which uh, showed that the uh, interaction between atoms depend on the number of atoms which are in the uh, given site. So this interaction constant, which you can measure somehow, was different experimental. And this was, was I guess, the first paper uh, which showed the importance of this, of the interaction for, for one. In fact, there were several notifications with several friends listed here. Uh, and, and we somehow uh, made some small contribution to this. Uh, so, uh, so again, we look at this, mm. at this awful Hamiltonian, which is here. This one. And suppose uh, we don't, we know that we cannot solve exactly the interaction problem with multiband system. So what we, one can do, and this is in consistent way was, was done by, by Bisbord and by Dirkloof and others, is to, let's say, let's forget about the tunneling first. Let's consider the deep lattices, forget about tunnelings, and when we are on, on single side, we can diagonalize the interactions and build the proper wave functions. If we can build this proper interacting wave function on a single side, then later we will uh, allow for tunneling and uh, maybe we will have some motor working. Uh, I don't know if I will have time, so I tell now, but of course this procedure may work only for moderate interactions. Because once you mix several bands to very high level, then the standings are not only to nearest neighbors, but of course the particle in higher bands can go very fast. And all the type binding expansion practically breaks down. So we are not going into the limit of G being uh, theoretically large, but we, uh, we have to look at moderate, uh, moderate Gs. And then uh, we reduce ourselves to interaction in a given site and look at this interaction. What are the, what are the, the possibilities? Uh, of the interactions. Uh, we will also have, ah, sorry, first, okay, so I will come to this point later because, so, so we treat this, uh, this uh, local system, 
media diagonal analysis and obtain uh, indifferent particle number subspaces, because particle number, of course, is conserved, we get different ground states. So we have a ground state for one particle, for two particles, for three, for four, and so on. And we can compare this ground state uh, and somehow try to uh, express it in a nice way. So one way of expressing it is the ground state, let's say, is, is we have n particles with, uh, with some energy E0, which is the the single particle energy, plus some term which is proportional to n and minus 1, just to uh, recall the bose hubbard limit. But uh, depending on n, this constant u, u is not a constant, but really is depending on n. So it is cheating the, the model, but this way we can define u for different n. This is equivalent, such an approach is totally equivalent to the fact that you write this energy and express it in a single energy term plus uh, u2 uh, and have n n minus 1 plus some different coefficient which should be called with different letter and call it n n minus 1 n minus 2 and we can call it the effective free body interaction and then we will have effective four body interactions and we can have uh, such a series coming from this diagonalization and hopefully these coefficients will, uh, will behave reasonably and we can get these coefficients from, from diagonalization. Uh, later, we will include the, the tunnelings. Uh, so what are, what are the, the tunnelings? First we have the, uh, I'm sorry, I have the, the order of the slides not too good. First we have the normal tunnelings, which were G. And then there is other terms which were forgotten in the bose hubbard approach but which are very well known in, in, in condensed matter because we were done by Hirsch, the same Hirsch who invented the index, so he, that, he did the bad thing, but he also did good physics. <laughs> and the good physics was that, that there are terms which connect the sites coming from these interactions. And in particular, uh, there are terms where you, when you take uh, one annihilation, one creation operator from one side of the other, some kind of a tunneling, and then the occupation on the side, because you have a choice between A and A dagger. So you, you, can, you always have to take two A daggers and two A's, but you can take uh, one A dagger from one side and one A from the other side, and you still have the tunneling plus the density. And these terms contribute in uh, such uh, integral forms to the tunneling. So, so yeah, the, the, I can the, write the, it down. There is a physical argument for this, if I remember. For, for 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 particular kind of fermions. I mean, it, he did it for uh, he did these arguments for for uh, electrons. Yeah, and, then and there is a reason for it because then we know exactly what the U is. It's a cure of energy. Okay. And the, this, this 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 model has a very. It's not universal in some sense. It refers to a system which has particular band structure, which has particular behavior of a, of a directing function. So, I mean, why should you all over the sudden bother here? You know, and because I, I don't remember exactly everything. Okay. I, will, I will show you why. I'm not why going should, to give yes, an I will show impression you why that I know the paper by Hirsch now. For, okay. you know, this, but as far as I know, it, it clearly is in three dimensions. Yes, yes. It's okay. not in one dimension. I, I believe it does not exist. Well, well, okay, in now I smoothly change to three dimensions, but it doesn't matter really. Uh, Hirsch is, is just the type of the term which is given. But, yeah, in, but, but this, in, this term. It, it, this it, it, term I will show you. I will show you experimental results which show that this term, term is very important. Also, even in one dimension? Even in in this, not in, in, three, in three dimensions. In three dimensions, are, but also for contact interactions. Not for long range Coulomb, but for contact no, no, This is interesting because yeah, the long range interaction producing terms yeah. that, that link different sides is kind of obvious. Yeah, yes. that's what here are. it is non trivial. No, but here, that, that, that here it is non trivial. I don't understand that. Yeah. Okay, well, you write this. So I am right, I remember it correctly. This was the, this all is subject. After yes, all, we should not forget. In other words, you are giving too much credit to him. That's what he said. Yes. Okay. Okay. I should give credit to to dear Gluckman and other. Uh, uh, I don't care so much about names and credits. I mean, I'm trying to understand the physics. Okay. So this term, which was important for Coulomb interactions in uh, in, in some cases, in some cases, and was called bond charge tunneling, 
uh, in this language. I don't use this. I use density dependent tunneling because I don't have charges. My atoms are neutral. Yeah. So I don't like to speak about charge density ways, for example, which people use in cold atoms. I don't know for what reason. <laughs> because the atoms cannot have charge density ways. They have density ways. Because okay. they have lazy referees who will not reject them. Right? Yes. Okay. But, but this is just a discussion of, of nomen uh, nomenclature, okay, of semantics. Uh, but uh, the term exists. And uh, so when you but use. But then this physically, if I have this just contact interaction on the lattice, right? Yes, okay, I physically how, come the, how come this simple. Okay, I will, I will explain, if I may, if you give me you the can, chance. You can think about the crowding, but not. No. Okay, I have one vanier function at site i, uh, I have uh, other functions. Uh, let me write it with one of the steps, okay? As different side, and uh, so the term is n i a i plus a j dagger something like this. Okay. No. And the, the, on everything, the everything comes out from the fact that with these vanyers extend a little bit yeah. over the next side. Of a little bit, not much. So these terms are not uh, uh, large. They don't. They are a fraction, small fraction of J. But so the, the so the overlap of a function yes. is, yes. yeah. is not short range, right? It's overlap yes. is not extends short range. Over. So the, the, yeah, of the sum over i j goes over the this little neighbors. bit of the tails yes. which overlap. Yes, okay. and this is maybe peculiarity of science of sign potential. Maybe if you take other potential which has not the pure sign shape but something else, it will so have kind of steeper. steeper potential. It will yeah. be uh, totally neglectable. And potential. that, of course, is what will corresponds to how Hirsch got it. He got it for a very peculiar model. So this this so this, over, this over. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, okay, so let me just show you. Uh, so when you can build the effective Hamiltonian, uh, and this is this is what I just wanted to show you some results to show that life is not simple. For example, this is just the diagonalization on one side. Uh, results for uh, well, for three d dimensional lattice, some peculiar parameters. Lattice depth is is weak. Rather, for uh, uh, how many bands, uh, well, uh, this is uh, inverse of the band number, how many bands you include. So you include four bands, five bands, ten bands, whatever, something, a little bit more. And this is the value of coefficient un uh, in units of the value of bose hubbard coefficient, because it's natural, uh, natural uh, so for single band calculation. Uh, and then you see, uh, if you take the standard diagonalization approach, you take the, the basis and you cut it at some energy. So you take the lowest states in energy, as chemists, quantum chemists do. You, take, you, you somehow from the base take only states which have with, which will mean energy the smallest. Then you, uh, then you get these dashed lines, which apparently show you the convergent results. You, in, you in, increase the number of bands and you saturate. Okay? But then you can change the basis and look at which states are coupled perturbatively to which states and make the diagonalization which is, let's say, uh, physical coupling oriented. And with the same basis, so if already something like 40,000 states, yes, 40,000 states, then you see that you converge to slightly different results, which is, let's say, uh, 5 or 10 percent different from the other diagonalization. So it is tricky to get these coefficients. One can get these coefficients, but I can, and this is the experimental result, dear Professor Tursky. Uh, People measure so-called so -called quantum revivals. Uh, how they do it? They prepare the system, let's say, at a very low lattice, when the state is almost superfluid. I mean, there's a large fluctuation between number of sides. Let's say at uh, three energy recoils or five or seven. And then you prepare such a ground state, and then you very sharply change the lattice to very high value. So when this wave function, which is a combination of, of several uh, states, uh, evolve in time, acquiring a phase, which you can see this evolution here, and then you can extract what, is the, what are the energies of the states, by, uh, like, the quantum, like the standard quantum revival from, 
from, let's say, harmonic oscillator. And then uh, energies are extracted here, and the dashed lines, which uh, if, if there would be only one U uh, contribution, then there would be single peak. And these are the, the, the peaks observed experimentally by Fourier transforming the signals, and the dashed lines are the uh, calculations of, of Dirk uh, Luchmann and, and uh, well, Dirk Luchmann and Dirk Luchmann, okay, because the rest of the group was experimental, so he had to do that. And uh, so, uh, so this is how, how good fit is. So this is nature paper which kills the discussion, that I say, about the on-site interactions. Mm, uh, you can calculate also the, well, how they depend on the tunnelings, depend, I don't have time. This is the, this is funny plot, which we have got with Mateusz, which is the mean field phase diagram for this Bose Hubbard. Uh, normally, mean field phase diagrams depend only on the number of neighbors. Okay? If you have make this standard approach, uh, numbers of near nearest neighbors. So this is, there's a parameter which counts how many neighbors you have, and then you have you can rescale from one dimension to two dimension to three dimensions exactly uh, without any problem. Uh, now, uh, even doing the mean field calculation, we are doing it with system which uh, has different interactions than different legal dimension. Because if you went one D, then you have tight binding in perpendicular directions, and then this thing depends. Uh, uh, is difficult, difficult. You can also look at uh, phase diagram in without mean field. Uh, so this is the, this phase diagram which I drawn here in standard Bose Hubbard, and this is with DMLG and you see the difference between the two. And I stop here showing you some kind of conclusions that I don't, I cannot forget about this because among these people on this, on, in this room there may be some future uh, reference of the uh, of, uh, <laughs> final report from the grant, so watch out, better give the credit to, to where the money comes from. Uh, it's possible to get some effective solution for strong interactions. Uh, this is, however, very difficult for polar molecules, which I didn't explain. And then there is plenty of things which can be done, uh, which are not understood and are to be done in the future. Thank Sorry you. for speaking too long. Thank you.